Hi, I'm Patrick with a laden scoop full of soap exclusives. You've got to love Ian Beale, a comic clown in a sea of despair. This week, he decides that if Jane wants out, he's going to change her mind. When no one shows at her 40th birthday in the Vic, Jane gets chatting to a guy called Martin and invites him home, only to find Ian and Bobby waiting for her. So Ian goes to war and introduces a rather fetching new girlfriend, Jeanette, whose sudden appearance bemuses and confuses Jane. Where did she come from? Look no further than the yellow pages. Jeanette reveals she's an escort, and the Beals' marriage really does look kaput in the ensuing row. Roxy decides her sister needs some guidance when Ronnie sacks her lawyer. Despite harsh words from her sis, Roxy hires another one on her behalf. Meanwhile, Jack is still reeling from the twin whammy of learning Tommy isn't his and Ronnie's rejection, so he dives into a vat of whiskey. But his unhinged aggro behaviour gets him turfed out of the Vic. And there's worse awaiting in R&R. &R. Rainy is only too keen to offer him a soft landing. We know things are bad, Jack, but don't do it. Meanwhile, Vanessa wonders why Max is so distant. Couldn't be to do with Tanya's return from honeymoon, could it? You know it could. Next, we're in Weatherfield. Steve McDonald really is a weakling. Having been consistently bullied by Becky, he finds himself manipulated into a day out with Tracy and Amy. The Blackpool ear must get to him because he finds himself enjoying playing family and further lies to Becky about needing to drive a funeral party south. Amy wanders off when Steve and Tracy row, but while they soon find her, they discover their car's been nicked. Cue more excuses to a clueless Becky. When they get to a B&B for the night, Tracy works her black magic on Steve and, well, you can guess the rest. When they return to Weatherfield, Becky immediately finds an incriminating photo and accuses him of infidelity. Becky does her usual and goes on a bender, returning only to start a fight with Tracy. When Steve breaks it up, he berates his wife and lists all the things she's made him lose. Has Tracy won the war for his affections? There may also be more trouble looming for the McDonald's when David comforts a forlorn Max. He can't understand why Kylie isn't looking after her son, and Kylie's feeling backed into a corner. Is she about to spill the real story of why he's living with Steve and Becky? Finally, we're in Yorkshire. It's dodgy Derek's day in court when Lisa wants to see justice served. But she asks Zach to stay away from court. She doesn't need the distraction. Pig-headed Zach doesn't listen and turns up just as Lisa is giving evidence, putting her off. And although Derek is convicted of rape, it's not for hers. Lisa is understandably upset with Zach and tells him she can't be with him anymore and she leaves wishing well. Zach's bewildered. He was only trying to support his wife and now his marriage is in tatters. But will she eventually come around? Amy's proving to be a thorn in David's side. Adolescent anguish is one thing, but Amy's putting around that he's been trying it on with her. He doesn't help his cause by giving her an unwanted item of Layla's jewellery, but Amy confuses romance with friendship. Amy's heartbroken when David spurns her kiss, and she compounds the drama when she lies to Victoria that he tried it on with her. She's humiliated and does a runner, only to leave David facing the wrath of Valen Pollard, who wants to call the police on her.